What's up everybody, Mark Green here from DiabetesDietGuide.com, bringing you free information about how to manage your diabetes and get the best from your lifestyle changes. If you haven't done so already, head over to the blog, DiabetesDietGuide.com, where we've got a bunch of free information, all for you about managing diabetes and living healthy lifestyles. If you need an extra helping hand, we have inexpensive programs that give you lifetime membership that lay it all out for you, step by step. Um, and if you want a little bit more of a personal touch, we do have consultancy services where we work one to one with you. But anyway, in the meantime, we're gonna give you the free information. And today we are talking about understanding your Freestyle Libre one and two data. Now, the first thing to do with this, and this is one step that seems like none of my patients do, is go into your data on either your monitor or your app and go to daily graphs. Don't just look at the scan data like the old blood glucose where it just gives it to you one at a time. Look at the daily graphs. That's where the action's happening. That's where the money's at because it literally gives you a 24 hour graph of everything that's happened every day. So you can start to identify patterns and if you can identify patterns and understand what the data's telling you, which I'm gonna tell you in this video, then you can start to make changes. So make sure you go in there. So I'm just gonna take you through lots of very common things that we see in clinic and actually what those mean. Therefore, you can analyze your data and make changes um, yourself. So let's jump right in. Okay, so we're going to get a graph up because it's on a graph. And let's say we have midnight and midnight. So we've got a 24 hours. So let's start with the overnight reading, shall we? So you've got your target range. So target range is gonna be somewhere between four and 10. Don't think you can set it higher than 10. Some people will be comfortable over 10. Don't read into it too much. But you know, four, five to 10 is a pretty good place to live. That's a good target range. So what we usually see overnight then is, we either see this steady decline like this. We see a steady rise like this. We see it steady and then it kicks up like this. Uh, or we see it just ticking along nicely, okay? So the first one, this gradual decline. This is an indication that you have too much background insulin. If it's too much background insulin, it will slowly tailor off as the night progresses. If you haven't got enough background insulin, conversely, it will gradually rise. So that's an indication to adjust the background insulin. Whereas if you see this where it's flat and then it suddenly kicks up, that's hormone related. That's what we call the dawn phenomenon where those hormones designed to get you up in the morning can cause a bit more insulin resistance in your body and it can be really tricky to manage. You're gonna to have to wake up and do a correction dose. Um, or for some people, it is an indication to go on to pump therapy because you can change your background insulin hour to hour so you can increase the rate to offset that rise. And finally, that steady line like that, that's what we want. We want your background insulin to keep you steady. Now, sometimes you'll be steady, but you'll be steady high. So if you're steady high, there's two things to look for. First thing, where did you go to bed? Because if you went to bed with a high glucose level here, then the argument is that actually you've done an insufficient rapid dose the night before. So you've gone to bed high and you've woke up high. Had you done a correction and dropped your glucose levels to here, you'd have woke up with a steady glucose level here. So that's the first thing to try if that happens and see what happens. If that doesn't help, then it might be an indication that actually you've just got insufficient background insulin, and therefore we need to increase it up to help just lower the, cur help lower the lines altogether. So there's three things, or four things, or five things even, just to think about in terms of your overnight graphs, okay? Actually, before I go on, one other thing that might affect these overnights is your evening meal. Sometimes you will have an evening meal, say here, and you'll take your rapid dose, last four and a half hours, but sometimes you'll have a very slow releasing meal like a curry or a pizza or something like that. And so your glucose levels are ticking along nicely and then the insulin wears out and the food's still being absorbed. So glucose levels kick up and it looks like it's insufficient glucose, uh, sorry, insufficient insulin, but actually it's to do with the meal that you had the night before. So one thing to do is look when the rise starts to happen because it, as I say, if it's insufficient background insulin, it will be very gradual, but it will be all night. Whereas if it's a meal related, the second, about four and a half hours after taking that rapid insulin, you'll start to see the rise. Otherwise it will be flat, up it goes, and usually it will tail off once the food's been digested. And it will be very rare, it'll be infrequent, unless you're having takeouts or high fat foods all the time, then that shouldn't happen every day. Whereas insufficient background insulin will be a common occurrence. So that's step one. Step two 
is to do with your rapid insulin. So let's have a look at these rapid insulins then. So we can usually tell when there's been a rapid insulin dose, there's your target, because your graph does this. Well, let's say it's a correction first, goes up, then you get big drops like that. Rapid insulin. So background insulin is a steady decline, rapid insulin and a correction in particular is like this, okay? Now, particularly what will happen is sometimes we'll see a correction, which leaves you into the hypo land. So then they overcorrect the hypo and up they go. Now, usually the indication for this and completely understandable is they didn't feel like the hypo was correcting itself quicker despite the fact they've taken some sugar on board. However, the fact the glucose levels has rebounded very high shows that in fact, actually, yes, the glucose was being absorbed and therefore it didn't matter if they took in the appropriate 20 grams of carbohydrate. You might take a little bit more depending on how low your glucose levels are. Or if you took six tons of quick releasing carbohydrate or sugar, the same effect would have happened. So, you know, it's done the job, hasn't it? It's done the job here. So it doesn't matter how much you've taken so that you can see actually when it has got in, it's too much. So the amount does not affect the absorption rate. It's gonna take as long as it takes. And I appreciate sometimes that's gonna be quite scary, particularly if your glucose levels are really low and we'd rather you went high than stay low. But if it's quite a mild hypo, and it's easy for me to say because I'm not in the hypo, but just give it a go. Try and treat it with a small amount of sugar, your 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrate, see what happens. The other thing we can look at is the absorption and um, carbohydrate ratios. So you'll know if your dose is correct from a carbohydrate counting perspective because your glucose levels will come back to where they started. So it's gone up and that's to be expected. How much it goes up is another conversation. But if it comes back, your rapid dose has been sufficient because it lasts four and a half hours. We've given it time to work and it's come back to where it should be. If it doesn't come back to where it was, then we can see that we haven't given enough rapid insulin. So in this indicate, this is an indication that we need to look at the ratios or your carbohydrate counting method. Sometimes what happens as well is, do we have the blue? Yes, trusty blue. Ugh. Is the timing or the type of carbohydrate that you're eating. Some foods are very quickly absorbed and the insulin can't keep up. So you eat the food and it shoots up and then it comes back to where it was before the meal. So it's come back to where it was before the meal. So an increase in insulin would have caused a hypo. So actually what's happening here is the food is in before the insulin can keep up because the insulin takes about 30 minutes to get into your system and about an hour to peak. So we can either move the insulin injection earlier, not always the most practical advice, or we can change the type of carb to a slower releasing carbohydrate. And anecdotally, sometimes having a little less carbohydrate can help sort that out. So that's to do with your rapid insulin. Now, last but not least, a couple of things we can look at here. So we'll draw out the graph again. Hopefully you can see that. So this is looking at those overnights and what causes the high or the low, okay? So we can almost divide the night into two sections. We can think of it as the first half of the night and the second half of the night, okay? So what you often see is people thinking that their background insulin is out because they have a hypo overnight. Let's get those target ranges back on. But actually what they've done is, is they've overshot their correction or their rapid insulin in the evening, so they've got a drop. So they're already on their way. They take their glucose here. So they go, oh, okay, it's okay, I'll go to bed. But the trajectory is down. So they end up in a hypo into the second half of the night, and then they wake up and test their glucose levels here, and they assume that their background insulin is causing hypos. Not the case, the problem is in the first half of the night, which has dropped their glucose levels. And as we know from that first page, if it was background insulin, it'd be more like this. And there we can see, actually, now it's occurred in the second half of the night, which is then that slow and steady drop, which is your background insulin. And interestingly, ignoring the time of the day, and forget about this splitting it into segments, this drop as well is generally what you see with cardio exercise. So when people are busy at work, you'll see that the glucose levels just starts to drop off ever so slightly, particularly causes problems when people run their glucose levels quite tightly. So they might between say four and eight, and it doesn't take a great deal then for their glucose levels to drop below four and cause a hypo. You know, if your glucose levels are five, that's brilliant. But if you've got an active job and you struggle to keep your glucose levels in check, or you know, you're prone to the odd drop, it only needs to drop 
one or two millimoles before you're in hypo land if you're five. So sometimes if you're busy or active, it's worth running your glucose levels a little bit higher, eight, nine, 10. You're not gonna to come to any additional harm or risk running there, and you've got a bit more margin for those hypos. So there you go, guys. Whistle stop tour of how to understand your graphs, but actually a lot of information covered. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna leave it there. Remember, if you found this useful, subscribe and like the video. I don't always post so regularly, um, just because of my job and my time. Got a little baby at the time of filming who needs a lot of attention. So turn on the bell to give you notifications about when we post. Remember to head over to diabetesdietguide.com if you need any extra information or a helping hand. We do have programs, we have a type two recovery program, we have a weight loss program, and we have a type one glucose stability program. Inexpensive, 90 pounds, compared to a personal training session, which is say 40 to 60 pounds per hour. It's pretty good value, but if you do need an extra helping hand, we do one-to-one -one consultancy, but we'll sit down with you and look at your individual circumstances. And that we do both one-to-one, -one, pay as you go, and also a three month program. Check it out, no obligations. And there's also a bunch of free information there as well. So check it out, any, check out the blog anyway. Um, leave it there, see you later.